Flynn is on Kiki Cord. Chad Swift is on Eldrazi Taxes. Is that what we're calling it? Eldrazi? I guess he does have Thought Knots here. And He's Eldrazi got the displacer. Eldrazi Displacer. Yeah, so it is a, a Hate Bear style deck. Although, actually, it's mono white. Uh, yeah, I guess he has the Brushland and the Horizon Canopy. Do we have any green in the sideboard? No, we're just kind of throwing them off. Horizon, yeah. Horizon Canopy lets us draw cards. Yeah, so these Eldrazi Taxes decks, uh, you know, they've been cropping up online for quite a while. I feel like we haven't really seen them on the Open Series a whole lot yet, uh, but this will be pretty exciting to see this deck in action. All right, well, Chad does have a copy of Eldrazi Displacer on turn two, thanks to Eldrazi Temple. That, my friends, is a Murmuring Bosk uh, from Jeff Hoagland. So if we can get the text for that on there, I know it taps for green for free. You can get a black or a white by paying a life and it enters the battlefield tapped unless you reveal a tree folk from your hand. Hmm. I wonder how much better that is than mana confluence. Uh, it's fetchable because it's a forest. Oh, so, it's fetchable. So, okay. So that's, that's why, a big it's deal. why it taps for green for free. So he yep, was able to find it with a wooded foothill. So uh, on Jeff's second turn here, it looks like he has a a uh, copy of Wall of Fruits and a Birds of Paradise. So Chad is going to accelerate with Eldrazi Temple, but Jeff's going to do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, Chad does have a Thought Knot Seer, though, so let's see what Jeff has in his hand. And one of the things I really got to give credit to Hoogland for is he's really good at finding the really weird cards in the card pool that end up being quite b good, and that uh, Murmuring Bosk is definitely one of them. All right, so it looks like he had collective co or Court of Calling, Collective Brutality, a Wall of Roots, and a couple of lands that Thought Seer is going to take care of that Court of Calling out of Jeff's hand, and now we're living off the top. Yeah, Chad unfortunately still doesn't have any profitable attacks because that Wall of Roots is an 0-4, so Jeff is basically holding the offense at bay for now, and Jeff just wants to keep developing his board, getting more creatures into play, and in uh, basically a generic board stall, Jeff is going to be able to profit more than Chad is. Especially since he has a way to just win the game. So a lot of times uh, when talking with Jeff and watching him play this game, uh, he basically just kind of like plays it as, you know, just a grindy value-driven deck that just happens to have a combo kill in it when yeah. and if you need it, as opposed to being hyper-focused on that. Yeah, and uh, an another thing too is in, in certain ways it's a, it's a control deck where instead of killing your opponent's creatures, you're just looking to block them. And eventually you just build up into some sort of really powerful end game later on. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> unfortunately, Chad, you can't just discard a planes there. Uh, Jeff is going to collect a brutality. He's going to look at his hand and pick an instant or sorcery. And it looks like we have... Plains, Horizon Canopy, Restoration, Restoration Angel. Angel. And I can't tell what that I card is. I think it's a Tectonic is. Edge. Uh, yeah, oh, it looks like it's a promo Tectonic Edge. Uh, and Jeff is just going to play an 05 Wall of Roots. So we've, we've got our walls holding down the fort, drawing into something like Court of Calling is going to be pretty good value. We have all of our mana. And so Chad kind of wants to get some sort of offense going. It may be worth it to blink the 05 Wall of Roots and just attack with the Thought Knots here. Well, Restoration Angel can only hit his own creatures. He's oh, 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 with the Eldrazi Displacer, you mean? Right. Yeah, that, that will definitely get, get something going. I mean, it'll get four damage in, potentially, but that four damage isn't particularly relevant, which is a little unfortunate. All right, well, he's just going to play a Ghost Quarter and pass the turn back. And if neither player is taking damage, uh, I feel like this immensely favors Jeff Hoogland. Well, Jeff's going to draw a card, play a Raging Ravine, and pass. Two cards that Chad could draw that would help kind of break this open are the Brimaz King of Oreskos, because it could just start generating a bunch of tokens, and uh, Mangaro of Condor, or Corondor, could also do a little bit of work. All right, well, he's going to Restoration Angel his Thought Knots here. He's going to find a Lightning Bolt, use it to kill the Eldrazi Displacer, and then he has two lands in hand, so Thought Knots here doesn't do anything. And Chad is actually putting together some reasonable top decks. It looks like he's got another Restoration Angel, so he's going to be able to 
uh, tag Jeff's hand again with this thought nuts here at the end of his draw step if he chooses. All right. The attack for three, that's going to drop Jeff down to 14. Here's a ooh, voice of resurgence. I like that card. So it doesn't do a whole lot, though, and this uh, flying threat is, is a little bit of a problem. Especially considering Chad picked up another copy of Restoration Angel. Yeah, and I would really want to put this other Restoration Angel onto the board. I and mean, he's going to sit on it. Oh, he, he would have had to have done it in response to the voice of resurgence, and he didn't want to. Yeah. Right, yeah, so. I think I would have liked to have played the Restoration Angel there just so that Chad would have more pressure. Yeah. But it looks like he's... Uh, Looking to save it. Oh, Horizon Canopy is going to draw him a card. Looks like he picked up another Thought Not Seer. And Thought Not Seers are, are pretty great on the opening turns of the game, but when your opponent is essentially hellbent, they're a little on the weak side because they're if, if they don't get anything when they get played, but they give something when they die, that's uh, kind of a bad proposition. Restoration Angel is going to knock Jeff down to 11. Chad is going to pass the turn. Jeff will draw what appears to be a path exile for the turn. He's going to play his land. Let's see if he decides to start attacking with that Raging Ravine or if he tries to wait. Nope, he's just going to go ahead and path the Thought Knots here. And this is one of the good things about having Voice of Resurgence in your deck is it makes it so that when your opponent is holding up mana to potentially do something, you get a lot more value out of uh, your turn. All right, so Path Exile is going to target Thought Not Seer. Chad will Restoration Angel in response. He's going to stack his triggers so that Thought Not Seer will get to exile a card after Jeff draws a card. But Jeff will get one of those elemental tokens from the Voice of Resurgence. And this elemental token is going to be huge. Just an absolute monster. I mean, right now it's a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, with the Rage and Ravine get activated, it's a 6-6. Six, six. He's going to attack with Rage and Ravine and his Voice of Resurgence. You have to try and turn the corner at some point. And Chad does have Jeff on a two-turn clock, but that um, Birds of Paradise is going to be able to act as a chump blocker. Mm -hmm. Well, Thought Not Seer is going to trade with Rage and Ravine. Restoration Angel is going to kill the Voice of Resurgence, which will give Jeff another elemental token. And now they're currently both 5-5s. Five fives. Yeah, I'm a little nervous with the other elemental token. Jeff, but Jeff gets to draw a card from the Thought Not Seer leaving. Looks like it's a Voice of Resurgence, so he could potentially fetch out of Basic Planes and play the Voice of Resurgence here. And in these decks that are mostly creatures like Kiki Cord, Voice of Resurgence can just be such a powerful haymaker. Mm -hmm. It's pretty pretty unreal how big these tokens can get, and also just how many of them you can end up getting. Like one Voice of Resurgence netted two five fives for a two mana investment. It's pretty unreal. Yeah. All right. Chat's gonna draw for his turn. He does have a lot of power in the air, uh, but Jeff is threatening to build up a, a ground force here that's pretty impressive. And he hap if he ever happens to find something like an Eternal Witness to get back that Court of Calling or a Court of Calling. Or uh, Path to Exile. To start chain chaining some cards here. Oh yeah, the Court was Exile with Thanos here, so he's not able to get it back with Eternal Witness. He does still have three more in his deck. And I feel like what Chad wants to do is just line up a kill. He's not going to mm -hmm. be able to answer all of Jeff's stuff, and he's probably not going to be able to um, you know, play defense particularly well. So I like trying to put Jeff on a two-turn clock. That Birds of Paradise is going to be able to do some blocking, though, and kind of mess things up. Right, so Chad is going to play a Thought Not Seer. Jeff is Hellbent. And Athalia, Guardian of Thraben. And, I mean, this Thought Not Seer, it's probably just on chump blocking duty. And, uh, you know, when it dies, Jeff's going to be able to draw another card. So these Thought Not Seers are, are looking pretty bad in this particular scenario. Jeff is just going to attack with his two 6-6 six, six elementals. Chad is going to chump one of them with Athalia. Take six. Jeff is going to hold his land in his hand. 
And Chad really wishes that he just had like another Restoration Angel. That would have been really good. Or some way to remove this Birds of Paradise. Mm -hmm. There's the Tectonic Edge for Chad. And against a lot of decks, these uh, Tectonic Edges and Ghost Quarters would have some, some good utility, but not against Jeff Hoogland's, uh, you know, Wall of Roots Birds of Paradise deck. Yeah. Restoration Angels are going to crash in. Jeff will chump block one of them. The Birds of Paradise fall down to one. Tectonic Edge is going to take out Murmuring Bosk that he actually can't use for anything other than green mana. And there's, uh, there, I guess there's no more basics. Oh, that's Tectonic Edge. Never mind. Yeah. Well, now we know there's no more basics because that was a ghost quarter that time. Yep. Uh, yeah, Jeff has the second forest in his hand. Just draws another land and is going to scoop scoop the game to just an army of flying creatures. Now, Jeff also has Restoration Angel in his deck. He was just never able to actually find a copy of it. So let's take a pl look at the player sideboards here as Chad Swift is going to take game one here against Jeff Hoagland with Eldrazi Taxes. Uh, Chad has three Reality Smasher, two Sun Lance, two Blessed Alliance, two Rest in Peace, two Spell Skite, one Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, a Selfless Spirit, a Kataki Wars Wage, and one Graph Digger's Cage. How do you think Chad's going to sideboard? So I think the Reality Smashers are going to be a good source of pressure. Uh, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is also kind of an interesting card to play because Jeff plays a lot of creatures. So I think those are going to be the, the top picks from Chad's side. Uh, you, you could also make a little bit of an argument for uh, Graph Digger's Cage also to interact with some of Jeff's graveyard stuff. Now on Jeff's side, we have two Blessed Alliance, one Eidolon of Rhetoric, an Engineered Explosives, a Fulminator Mage, three Ghostly Prison, one Reclamation Sage, two Slaughter Games, two Stony Silence, two Surgical Extraction. What do we think Jeff's bringing in? I think that uh, Jeff could make a solid argument for bringing in Blessed Alliance uh, just to play a little bit more defense. But other than that, I don't think he's really going to want to do a whole lot. I think that uh, Jeff is set up pretty well in this game, and a lot of his sideboard cards are matchup specific. Uh, and I don't think he has anything specifically for this matchup. Well, that does make a lot of sense. Uh, one of the cool things about Jeff Hoagland's deck that I really like mm -hmm. is he just has a bunch of cool non-basic lands in this deck. Oh, yeah. All of the fetches, all of those shocks. Even Murmuring boss. Even some of the utility lands like Horizon Canopy. Uh, there, there are versions of those cards that you can get, though, that are expeditions. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, and, nice. And we have a... Those are real shiny. And we have a weekly sale going on at StarCityGames.com where you can get up, up to 25% off the Masterpiece Series cards. So if you're a fan of Chad Swift's deck and you want to get some sweet Aether Vials, there are some invention versions. If you want to get some awesome lands, those expeditions, up to 25% off Masterpiece Series cards. It ends Monday at 10.59 a.m., so make sure you head on over to StarCityGames.com for their weekly sale to get some of those cards. Are you a big foil guy? Uh, I'm not a big foil guy, but whenever I see someone sit down and I see that their entire deck is foil, I just think to myself, wow, this guy's probably been playing this deck forever and he's probably awesome. <laughs> and I get, I get a little scared. Fair enough. Uh, now, uh, one person that strikes fear into the heart of all players in modern is Jeff Hoagland. So let's learn a, a little bit more about him. 61 cards at a time. Him. He has 25 for Bloomington, Illinois. He has 15 open top eights, but he hasn't quite been able to capture a win yet. Yeah, Maybe he can change that insane. this weekend. One invitational top eight. Uh, he's a stay-at-home dad with two awesome sons and future Magic players. He manages several open source coding projects focusing in Linux, and he has a master's degree in mathematics. So. Maybe he's right and we're all wrong because we don't have master's degrees in mathematics <laughs> and we're all playing 60 cards. He is the number scientist. <laughs> he is the number wizard. So players are going to finish shuffling up here. Who do you think has, actually has the edge in this matchup? So I think that, uh, generally speaking, Jeff does. We saw that last hand. The, uh, the early Thought Not Seers, or the early Thought Not Seer did a lot to help disrupt Jeff's draw. Uh, that said, um, you know, Jeff basically had the ground locked up, and Chad drew two out of his four Restoration Angels. Other than that, he's got some Flicker Wisps, but he's 
usually not going to have a whole lot of an air assault. So I think that if, you know, generally speaking, Jack is going to be able to lock up the ground and just profit in a board stall, stall more than Chad is. All right, well, as we let, head into game two here, Chad Swift is up a game on Eldrazi Taxes over Jeff Hoagland playing Kiki Cord. Jeff is going to lead off on a forest and a birds of paradise. Let's see if Chad has a turn one play. He does. Oh, it's a sun lance from his sideboard. Wow, Gonna nice. Going to take out that birds of paradise. Sometimes you just got to bolt the bird. Yeah, and normally basic planes can't do that, but uh, Chad's got those sideboard cards for a reason. A pretty sweet card. I feel like this should Here's see that. more play than it does because Lightning Bolt is just so good, and this isn't like really far away from it. I agree. Here's some magic trivia for you. All right, lay it on For those me. of you who might be playing super long, we'll see if Andrew Boswell knows. Do you know what color shifted card this is based off of? Because this is in Planar Chaos, one of the color shifted cards. Oh, this, this card exists oh, in another color. I mean, I started with like Revised and, and Ice Age, but I have no idea. So in Plane Shift, there's a card called Strafe that does three damage to a non-red creature. Okay. It's just a, just a pure color shift. Thing. You can use that to stump your friends. Cool. Uh, not many people sift through a bunch of magic cards like I do all day. <laughs> so you might not know that this card exists, but that's what it's based off of. Flavor text by Gerard. Wow, and the Graft Digger's Cage came in too. Interesting. And the Ghostly Prison. Wow, we're seeing all the sideboard cards. Yeah, so Jeff has a Voice of Resurgence for his second turn. Chad is just going to fire off an Aether Vial and a Graft Digger's Cage. Jeff has a Ghostly Prison, which is going to be very, very good in multiples against this deck. Like once yeah. you start getting multiples down, it really makes the game go long, which is what Jeff wants. Yeah, that that said, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll 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 see how it plays out. Thought not Sierra from Chad is going to take a selfless spirit out of Jeff's hand, leave him with a couple of lands. He does find a wall of roots for his turn, but much like last game, he's got a lot of mana and not much to do with it. Yeah, and this Ghostly Prison, it's going to buy a lot of time, but it doesn't actually do very much. So we'll see how this ends up going. It looks like Chad is in a pretty good situation, though, despite uh, my assessment of the matchup being favorable for Jeff. Let's see if Chad has another land. And normally Ghostly Prison would be, you know, pretty good against an aggressive creature deck, but this Eldrazi Taxi, Taxis deck, it has a few creatures that have relatively high power, and it has Aether Vial, so it can still use its mana to allow just one or two good threats to attack and still deploy threats. That said, Wall of Roots has something to say about this, uh, yeah, Thought Nuts here. Chad does have a land for his turn. It's a copy of Tectonic Edge. Let's see if he decides to attack with the Thought Not Seer. It's not going to do much with that 05 Wall of Roots. He has an Aether Vial. They can put a Leon and Arbiter on the battlefield. And now we're going to Ghost Quarter. Looks like Jeff is going to pay the two mana to be able to search. And what's nice about this play is this means that the uh, Thought Knots here could potentially attack. Mm -hmm. Although the Voice of Resurgence chump blocking could be something that he would be worried about. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that Chad didn't actually just Tectonic Edge that untapped non-basic land and then utilize the Ghost Quarter uh, as a strip mine. But even then, with Jeff having that Wall of Roots, I don't know if Mana Denial is going to be the, the perfect game plan here. Right. Jeff did pick up a copy of Court of Calling, though. This doesn't really do much because of that Graf Digger's Cage. Yeah. Aether Vial's going to tick up to three. Back, it, back to Chad's turn. There's another Eldrazi Temple. Yeah, and things are going pretty good for Chad so far. Jeff just doesn't really have much going on. He's got his defenses online, but he's not really doing anything. Right, Sun Lance is going to take out the Voice of Resurgence, except it can't because it's white. Yep. It's green, but it's also white. It is. Quick, very quick. Jeff very quickly points that out mm -hmm. to his opponent. Yeah, Jeff is a sharp player. He's been playing for a long time. There's a reason that he maintains his position as one of our top players in the Open Series, and it's because he's uh, very knowledgeable of all the cards. All right. 
Well, Thought Not Seer is going to attack. Two mana will be paid for the Ghostly Prison. That's going to knock Jeff down to 12. And Jeff is just using his life total as a resource, not one willing to chump block with his Wall of Roots or his Voice of Resurgence. Well, there is a path to exile. So we can use that to take care of the Thought Not Seer. Chad might have a Flicker Wisp here. Oh, and this is brutal. Oh, like wow. So Flicker Wisp is going to be able to blink the Thought Not Seer. It's going to allow Jeff to draw a card. And that's a Restoration Angel that he can't cast. Oh, wait, he can't cast it. Never mind. <laughs> I was a little dyslexic there with, with which lands were tapped and which lands were untapped. This Grafdigger's Cage is still going to pose a big problem for Jeff. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he brought in, if anything, to be able to interact with that Grafdigger's Cage. Yeah, I would imagine that he probably has nothing. I mean, um, you know, there, there could be an engineered explosives. There could be a Reclamation Sage. Rec reclamation Sage isn't too bad because it also hits Aether Vial. Mm -hmm. uh, although we didn't see that in game one, so Jeff, you know, may or may not know that it's present. But this game's starting to look pretty bad for Jeff. He really needs to get something going on. And a lot of his good top decks, like a Court of Calling, uh, are not currently live draws. Let's see here. Thought Not Seer is going to crash in. Jeff's going to double block with Voice and Restoration Angel. And I like just blocking or killing the Restoration Angel because this means that your Flicker Wisps is going to be able to attack on subsequent turns. So Chad does. And that if that was a Thought Not Seer, Jeff should have drawn a card. Yeah, I think he's I got the one I've card in front of okay. him. Oh, it's just kind of blended into the map. Oh, yeah, it's camouflaged. All right, and there's another Leonin Arbiter. Oh, and there's a Kiki Jiki that he can't quite cast. It's pretty good, though. Kiki Jiki with... Uh, Voice of Resurgence makes attacks pretty difficult, but Chad does have a flyer. Oh, and is that a is that a reality smasher? That is I'm a not reality really sure. smasher. Which is gonna come down and smash the realities of potentially trying to win this well, game. Well, ne next turn it will. <laughs> ah. The ghostly prison is uh doing some good work here. It's gonna buy him some time. There's the path to exile. Not, not really going to do much. This Eldrazi Taxus deck is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's looking uh, great right now. I mean, a lot of this game is Chad's hasn't drawn a lot of mana, but Jeff has. So that's certainly a big part of what's going on here. But I I agree, it's it's looking looking good. Yeah. Also, like the Graph Digger's Cage. Seems like it was real good this game. Yep. That Court of Calling not being able to be used for Jeff. It's yeah, pretty rough. And Jeff wasn't able to resolve a Court of Calling in the last game either because it got tagged by Thought Knots here. So uh, Chad doesn't have a whole lot of interaction, but the interaction he's had has been on point. All right, well, Reality Smasher is going to smash in for five. Drops Jeff down to seven. He's going to draw an Eternal Witness. And what's annoying about this is the, um, you know, you would like to get the Path to Exile to kill the Reality Smasher, but I don't think Jeff is particularly excited about potentially discarding his Kiki Court, or Kiki Jiki. Yeah, so I think that he's just going to witness back Resto, Resto blink the witness, get back Path to Exile. Uh, and the plan here might just be to chump with this Voice of Resurgence uh, on Chad's next attack. And uh, actually, instead of chumping, I would probably block with Voice plus Restoration Angel, because then it's a one-for-one -one trade with the Reality Smasher, because mm -hmm. you'd have six toughness in front of it. Ooh, this Eldrazi Displacer is going to put a damper on things. Well, it's still a little tricky for Chad to be able to attack and use the Displacer. He needs another land. All right, well, Thought Not Seer is going to come down for Chad. And it's going to be able to tag that uh, Path to Exile, and there's not nothing that Jeff can do about it at this point. 
Ooh, he might actually take the Kiki Jiki. So then he would be just be dead to a double red land. Mm -hmm. Looks like that is what he's going to do. Just in time. Reality Smasher can still attack. Maladrazi Temple's good. Yeah. And this Eldrazi Displacer can do a lot to help keep the tokens from Voice of Resurgence in check. I still like the double block on the Reality Smasher, though, because it's, it's just a one-for-one one on a card that's kind of hard to one-for-one. One. Yep. And the, dis and the Path to Exile will be able to take care of the Displacer. Standard yeah. challenge players, round three pairings are about to be posted. Please find your pairing in your seat. Standard challenge players, round three is going That said, we're... Jeff still, you know, isn't, isn't really doing anything. And the fact that Kiki Jiki is exiled is a little bit of a big deal because if the if Jeff is able ever able to kill the Graph Digger's Cage, it's, um, you know, he's still going to have a hard time getting it. Path to Exile will hit that Eldrazi Displacer. Jeff has another copy of Voice of Resurgence. But Chad just drew another Restoration Angel. I guess it's his first of this match, or this game. Mm -hmm. The Flyers really have been the story of the game, though. There's so little going on on the ground. I mean, we have a couple ground attacks here and there, but it really does seem like it's coming down to the Flyers, which is not surprising considering Jeff has Wall of Roots and Voice of Resurgence in his deck. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff is going to drop for his turn. Let's see what type of action he can cobble together here. What has to happen for Jeff to be able to win this game? I feel like the, well, outside of just an incredible top deck, I feel like what he would need is for Chad to basically cast the spell on Jeff's turn so that both of those Voice of Resurgence is triggered. But because Jeff isn't making any attacks, it's unlikely to happen. But chaining together these uh, Restoration, an or Restoration Angels with the Eternal Witness is definitely a good source of card advantage. All right, so Jeff is going to resto the witness, get back a resto. Chad is wow. going to cast a restoration engine on Jeff's end step, Boom. and Jeff's going to trigger for two elementals. Carrier kind online. Of, kind of like what you oh, just yeah. mentioned. Yep. And that's one of the few reasons that Chad would want to cast the spell on Jeff's turn. Oh, He's man. Blink Thought Not Seer. He'll be able to take a restoration angel from Jeff's hand if he wants, but there is also a Solly Pride Mage now. And both of these tokens are 7-7s. Seven that is huge. And Jeff's going to be able to play another creature on his turn to potentially make them 8-8s. Eight yeah, well, he, he will be able to resto on Chad's turn to blink the Eternal Witness. And he wants to do this so exile. that Chad doesn't have an opportunity to top deck uh, a removal spell. Yeah, on Chad's upkeep. Chad's going to put the vial up to four. And now this game is turned completely around. Jeff has the air locked up with both of his Restoration Angels, and he has two massive attackers in the form of these two eight, eight elemental tokens. Huh? Well, Sunlance. All right, seven, seven. seven. Sunlance is finally going to find a target and take out that uh, Eternal Witness. Yep, pointing at the ghostly prison, slowing the game down. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, on this turn, I don't think it's really doing anything, though. But man, oh man, did this game turn around. And this is, uh, you know, basically what I thought would happen is Chad's going to have a decent start, but Jeff is going to be able to bog the game down. And Jeff is the deck that has access to card advantage, whereas Chad doesn't. And all of Jeff's card advantage works in a board stall. So... Uh, this is going to be the either third or fourth time that Jeff has cast Path to Exile. And this is the first time that Chad's going to actually have mana available to pay for his own Leonin Arbiter. <laughs> it, if he would have only had one Arbiter. Yeah. But now that there's two, it takes four mana to be able to search. And so he just it's just been just true one mana removal spell. So Jeff is going to path that Restoration Angel and go on the offensive. Two Restos are going to attack. Two 7-7 seven, seven Elementals are going to attack. And he has two Voice of Resurgences back to block and turn into more Elementals if yeah. Chad decides to start attacking. Huge, huge. And normally, you know, bringing in uh, Ghostly Prison 
when you're planning on using Path to Exile against your opponent's creatures is a pretty counter synergistic idea. But knowing that Chad's deck has these Leon and Arbiters and uh, an Aven Mind Sensor certainly makes it a much more justifiable play. Chad has a Ghost Quarter for his turn. Looks like he has a Mind Sensor in his hand. This is not looking good for him now, especially as a game that looked like it was doing very, very well. <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, I think what it really comes down to is Jeff finding a Restoration Angel that was able to get him back another Restoration Angel, because that meant that he had the air locked up and he could potentially start beating down in the air. The, the elemental tokens were certainly the proverbial nail in the coffin mm -hmm. uh, to just make it so that the game ended in a, a much faster fashion. But in terms of you know who wins and who loses, I actually don't think those elemental tokens uh, were that big of a deal. So seeing how that game played out, do we think that uh, Chad is going to make any changes to his sideboarding here? Uh, his sideboard cards were pretty good. Uh, the Sun Lance and the Graph Digger's Cage certainly uh, came into play, as did the Reality Smasher. Uh, I don't think he's going to be bringing in uh, any new cards, though. What about on Jeff's side? Uh, after seeing the Graph Digger's Cage, he may consider the Engineered Explosives uh, or and or the Reclamation Sage. Yeah, I think just like the presence of um, Aether Vial makes Rex Sage potentially yep. worth bringing in. But now that you've seen Graph Digger's Cage, like we definitely want the Rex Sage. Also might even want the Explosives too. Uh, it looks like there is one Graph Digger's Cage in Chad's sideboard, yeah. so he did have it right on time. And if you can tag the Aether Vials, then Flicker Wisp becomes a much weaker card. So that's something that's, that, that is nice about uh, having some removal for either file. You can make it so that you don't walk into certain plays. Now, both of these players are battling their hearts out over the course of this weekend to try and make it into the top eight today, to try and win this tournament. But if you are able to make it into the top eight, not only do you get some points and some cold hard cash, you also get invited to the StarCityGames.com Invitational. Yep. Uh, our Season 3 Invitational will be coming up here in Atlanta at the beginning of December. It's a great tournament. And to win one of those, like Liam Lonergan did, you can get your own token. Yeah, super, super sweet. You'll definitely be the, uh, the envy of all your friends if you can you know, manage to achieve this accomplishment. It's definitely one thing that I've had on my bucket list. And you know, every, every single time I'm trying to do an envy, uh, I'm like, what would I get as my token, you know? Especially in like Liam's case where you just like, you, you play the deck that you like to play, which isn't a very yep. popular deck. You get to make a token that like mm -hmm. we don't already have. Yep. So now like any time there's a need for an el a 1-1 elf, yeah. Liam Lonergan is to the rescue. Yeah, I mean like his name becomes synonymous with his favorite deck, which is just an awesome thing all around. All right, we're heading into game three here. Uh, for those of you just joining us, Chad Swift is on Eldrazi Taxes. Jeff Hoagland is on Kiki Cord. Uh, Chad has a Leon and Arbiter on turn two, uh, but Jeff will fetch in response, get a stomping ground, fall to 17, and lightning bolt that Leon and Arbiter. Let's see if he has a turn two play to follow this up. You know, and uh, Jeff, in his 61 card deck, he's only got three lightning bolts. Just, you know, mathematically figuring out the perfect number for so you're everything. Saying it should be 62 cards? Uh, no, no, I mean, Je Jeff's the number scientist. You know, you heard it here first three lightning bolts, 61 card decks, the way to go. All right, that is white, Chad Swift, yet again. <laughs> Your deck has a bunch of, <laughs> of white creatures in it. Yeah. All right, so Jeff is going to fall to 16, play a selfless spirit. Uh, Chad is going to use all of his mana this turn to play Eldrazi Displacer and pass the turn back. Ooh, there is that Blessed Alliance. Blessed Alliance is a pretty nice way to answer uh, Reality Smasher. It's also a card which kind of plays well with Ghostly Prison because typically with a card like Blessed Alliance, the thing that's problematic is if they attack with a bunch of creatures, some of which are bad and some of which are good. Uh, but Ghostly Prison basically means that your opponent's only going to be attacking with their best creatures, so Blessed Alliance is always going to tag something that's just great. Yeah, it's definitely good in conjunction with Ghostly Prison. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff is just going to fetch out a Murmuring Bosk, fall to 15, attack for two, knocking Chad down to 18 and pass the turn back. Let's see if Chad decides to attack into this Blessed Alliance. Got to attack into it at some point, and it's certainly not on Chad's radar. All right, Blessed Alliance is going to make him sacrifice an attacking creature. 
Restoration Angel is going to blink it. It will no longer be attacking, and that will save it. Yep. Really nice play from Chad. Man, we've been seeing a lot of Restoration Angel in these last two rounds, and uh, it has just, been doing work. Just a reminder that that card is insane. Yeah, it's really good. When it was in standard, it's just like, it, it's almost impossible to, to play correctly yeah, it was in, no into fun. the face of that card. Yeah. You just kind of have to be on damage control. Yeah, if there's a lot of Restoration Angels floating around, I may have to reconsider uh, one of my pet cards in my sideboard, which is Bituminous Blast. Mm. It's a real good one. Chad can even blink his own Resto Angel to re-blink something if he needs to. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say non-Angel? I don't even remember. No, if, if he can... Oh, he with can, the Eltrazi Displacer. With the Displacer, yep. yes. Yep. Yeah, so Resto is going to come down. It's going to ambush an Eldrazi Displacer. Jeff is still going to take three and fall down to 12. And we are at Restoration Angel parity. Chad was able to get some value off of his Resto, and Jeff is now able to get some value off of his own. So in the Restoration Angel mirror, though, which illustration do you think wins? Uh, the original or the promo? I like the original, but I also think the Voice of Resurgence is very good in the Restoration <laughs> Angel mirror. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. So we've got a Spell Skite, a Voice of Resurgence, and Jeff is going to use his fetch now before any potential shenanigans for Chad. Way to find another red source tapped. That way, if he has another red source and happens to draw Kiki Jiki, he might just win the game. No big deal. And Don't mind top decking and just instantly winning. Spell Skite is uh, a lot of security for that line of play also. Yeah, it's very good against Eldrazi Displacer for sure. Oh, yeah. And normally Eldrazi Displacer would be able to keep the, any Voice of Resurgence tokens in check, but Spell Skite is going to be able to play Guard Duty in a number of ways. So with this setup, he actually can protect his own Eldrazi Displacer from removal by blinking his Resto Angel and using Resto to blink the Eldrazi Displacer. Yeah. <laughs> you watch my back, I got yours. Yep. Best friends forever. I'll draw the Displacer Restoration Angel. We're, hmm. seeing it, we're seeing it here on SCG Live. Hashtag BFFs. And this Sunlance is unfortunately doing nothing. Well, it can deal three damage to uh, uh, Spell Skite if you want. Yeah. Because Spell Skite is not white. All right. Chad and is now going what's to. What's Chad going to do here? Chad's going to attack with his Restoration Angel. And he's going to deal three damage to Jeff's Restoration Angel. I wonder if he was... Uh, we've seen him forget that Sunlance can't target white creatures a number of times. I wonder if this is going to be... Well, there's a Flicker Wisp. Let's see what he decides to remove. Might have been a situation where he forgot about Sunlance again, but... Yeah. All right, well, he's just going to blink his planes. Looks like there's a Reclamation Sage that Jeff picked up, one of the full art promos. I like that art. I did, one yeah, of, the, I one of the few cards that I prefer the promo art over the original. Horizon Canopy is just going to be sacrificed to draw a card. Yeah, and Ooh, we see Sally Pride Mage. Jeff pulling way ahead in, uh, in this particular game. He's just got more stuff, and his is the deck that, you know, if there's no attacks or being made from either player, Jeff is just going to be doing a lot more. Just never giving Chad any good targets for Sunlance. Right. I'm actually, so outside of Birds of Paradise, I don't think there are any like actual juicy targets for that card. And no. I'm kind of surprised that he is leaving them in. Yeah, I feel like Chad is probably looking at Jeff's mana base and saying, oh, he's, he's, a, he's a three, four color deck or whatever. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, is bringing in the Sunlance for that reason. It, it was good against, like, turn one Birds of Paradise. Yeah. So. Ooh, here we have Reality Smasher. But this is still just going to be a one for one. Yeah, Restoration well, plus either of the two twos means that Jeff is actually going to have an easy time dealing with this. Um, and the, uh, the Flicker Wisp will be able to get in for one attack, but Jeff can potentially trade. Um, the Selfless Spirit, 
you know, for it. Oh, actually, you can just trade the selfless spirit for the reality smasher. I like yep. that play. That seems like a fair, favorable That's really trade. Good. Yep. I'll trade my two drop for your five drop. Oh, and there's a Revel Arc now. Wow. Man. So this is the first time where we're actually going to be able to see Jeff's deck really do what it's designed to do. Uh, the deck only has one Revel Arc, but with all the uh, Court of Callings, he can usually find it whenever he wants it. And in these long games, it ends up being an, an attrition powerhouse. So he's going to attack for three with the Voice of Resurgence, drop Chad down to 14, cast a Revel Arc. When it leaves the battlefield, uh, he gets to put two target creature cards with power two or less from his graveyard into play, and has evoked six. Uh, Selfless Spirit has two power. Voice yep. of Resurgence also has two power. And it says leaves play, so you can blink it with Restoration Angel. Correct. He also is just going to be able to block with both his Pride Mage and his Revel Arc here, and trade the Revel Arc for the uh, Reality Smasher and get back Pride Mage and Selfless Spirit when the Revel Arc dies. Not, not too bad. That seems to be what Jeff is angling for. And this is a, you know, pretty bad situation for Chad because he can attack, but his his, his attacks just don't really do anything. Yeah. And this is really what Jeff's Jeff's deck wants to do. It just, you know, gets in this mire of a board state. And Jeff just has all these options, and his opponents generally they can attack, but attacking just doesn't really accomplish anything. Let's see what Jeff decides to attack with here. Just a selfless spirit. Exalted is going to make that three. Chad's going to fall down to 11. Birds of Paradise from Jeff. We're just a court of calling away from winning with Kiki Jiggy. And you can see with Jeff that he didn't attack with his Restoration Angel, and I think that's a real sign of strength in this particular scenario. I think that's Jeff saying, I just want to protect my life total. There's no way I can lose uh, so long as I don't give my opponent an opportunity to like steal the game with some weird mm -hmm. way. It's also like Restoration Angel like isn't really something that can be blinked effectively by Eldrazi Displacer, because right. then you can just blink something else and have it be untapped. Right, like the Selfless Spirit. Yeah. And so it looks like they're... Okay, so he tapped three lands, didn't announce that there was any mana floating. So tried to tap something down. Jeff paid two. Targeting his angel, so he looks like so. Displacer targeted Restoration Angel. Uh, Jeff is just going to pay a couple life to redirect it to the Spell Sky. And I wouldn't mind letting the Restoration Angel uh, blink the Selfless Spirit. Yeah. Um, I wonder if Jeff doesn't quite realize that's how it's going to work. Oh, I'm sure Jeff realizes. He just. I just don't know his reasons. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get an attack for five here. And things are looking pretty bad for our our swift player. This Eldrazi Taxes deck has been pretty sweet, though. I would definitely like to see more of it. It definitely looks like in this situation, though, he needs either a slightly more potent way to attack Jeff, or he needs more card advantage so that he can actually trade and slog through what Jeff is bringing to the table. And so here's the Sun Lance on the birds. So he'll tap the birds for blue and redirect the Sun Lance to the Spell Sky. <laughs> Let's see what Chad decides to go with here. And he can do some shenanigans with the Eldrazi Displacer, but he just doesn't have enough attacking power. So now he's going to have to use this Eldrazi Displacer defensively. And between the Birds of Paradise making blue mana and Jeff being able to um, use his Spell Skite for two life, uh, I feel like Jeff should be able to cobble together a lethal attack here. It's just a matter of if yeah. he wants to go for it or not. Yeah, he could play things a little bit more patiently. Maybe just attacks with all of his creatures. 
then he can stop two of the three of the uh, two of the blinks and have lethal. Yeah, the thing that you would want to worry about is an opposing restoration angel, because the yeah. restoration angel would be a surprise blocker. It blink his, it, it flicker his flicker wisp, which would essentially be two blockers. So a like one restoration angel essentially would mean that uh, it's like three blockers for four mana. Yeah. But it looks like Chad is just going to be trying to use his Eldrazi Displacer. To basically play as much defense as possible. So it looks, it looks like he's going to try and blink his Flicker Wisp. Jeff will redirect it to Spellskite. And he can try to do this again, but Jeff can pay two life, and Jeff is just going to have more than enough lethal attackers. And that's what's going to happen. Jeff Hoagland is going to win the match, two games to one, over Chad Swift on Eldrazi Taxes. He's just going to pick up one with his Kiki Core deck. That was a pretty interesting set of games.